Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna do a sourdough video and I'm gonna show you guys from start to finish how I prep and make my sourdough loaves. I have to say that these are not my recipes at all. I did not come up with these recipes. These are strictly followed by Shelby over on Instagram. I will add her Instagram right here and also have it linked down below. I follow her for all things sourdough. I actually bought my starter from her, dehydrated and then hydrated myself. And that's where I got my starter. So all of my recipes for sourdough I pretty much get from Shelby. She's amazing at sourdough. I want to give her all the credit This is all her method all her recipes So that is who I'm gonna be following today And I also want to put the disclaimer out right here right in the beginning that I am NOT in any way a Professional when it comes to bread when it comes to baking when it comes to anything sourdough I'm very much learning I am the process of learning about how to do sourdough learning about starters about fermenting dough all these kind of things I'm learning about all of it but I get questions quite frequently about how I make the traditional sourdough loaves that I make over on my Instagram stories so I figured I would just go ahead and film an entire sit down video and take you guys through the process from beginning to end of how I make my sourdough loaves obviously for this recipe you are going to need a sourdough starter so if you guys have not done that definitely look up methods on how to start your sourdough starter like I said I actually bought mine dehydrated from somebody and then I rehydrated it myself there's just many different ways that you can make your own sourdough starter so just look up that and you have to feed your sourdough starter that's a whole nother process so if you guys want a separate video on how to make a sourdough starter or tips about sourdough starters I could definitely make that but this is strictly just going to be how I actually make the bread okay without further ado we're gonna stop blabbing stop rambling and we're just gonna jump right on into the recipe we are gonna be starting with the night before when we're actually going to prep the starter so that we can make bread the next day so without further ado let's get on into it okay guys let's make some sourdough so the night before you want to make the bread you're actually going to create a basically a brand new starter overnight for this specific batch of bread so in that huge jar right there you see I actually have my active sourdough starter and that is the starter that I feed every day whenever I want to make bread but in this new jar what we're going to do is create a starter just for this batch of bread so in the starter for this night you're going to put 50 grams of your active sourdough starter and then you're gonna use 150 grams of water I usually use about room temperature water and then you're gonna use 150 grams of flour what you will see throughout this recipe is that I'm using my food scale for everything so I'm actually gonna be using grams and measuring instead of using a cup or um, like those kind of measurements I'm gonna be using grams so you're gonna need a food scale for this recipe and honestly for a lot of sourdough recipes you're going to need a scale so if you don't have a kitchen scale already I definitely recommend getting one especially if you want to get into sourdough so this whole entire video you'll see me being very precise about the grams that I put in there and I'll measure everything to the T just because especially in baking and especially with sourdough you really want to be exact on things and that's not to intimidate you or to make you scared or anything but that's just to say that it's a lot better and the process goes a lot smoother if you are exact on the measurements and I find that every time I'm a little bit off usually the bread will be a little bit off as well so try your best to be on the measurements which is definitely why I recommend a food scale so we are going to set this on top of my fridge overnight and we're gonna check back in the morning so that's just gonna sit there ferment overnight and then in the morning we will pick it back up and we will start making and prepping our loaves Okay guys, it is the next morning. Like I mentioned, for this part, you're gonna need a huge bowl. Just get the biggest bowl you have. You're gonna need that food scale again, like I mentioned, and then another smaller bowl for your salt mixture. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that starter that we prepped last night. As you can see here, it has doubled since last night, maybe even over doubled than what it was last night. And it is nice and bubbly and it is ready and active to be used for bread. And all those bubbles are great. So if you have bubbles, bubbles are good so now we are going to be making and prepping the actual dough for both of the loaves so this is the exciting part you're gonna take 680 grams of pure filtered room temperature water um, filtered I don't know what if did I say that right yeah filtered room temperature water into your bowl 680 grams and then you're gonna go ahead and take that starter that we prepped the night before that's been sitting all night fermenting and you're gonna use the entire jar you're not gonna measure it out you're literally gonna use the entire jar as you'll see here I literally scrape off the sides as much as I can because you really want to get all of that liquid gold like literally at this point that it is liquid gold <laughs> 
So in order to really get out all of that sourdough starter and to make sure I use every last drop, I'll usually use a rubber spatula just because that can get through all of the curves and edges in the jar and really get all of that precious sourdough starter out. All right, so this next part is when you're gonna start getting a little messy. So you're literally just gonna take your hand and kind of just like incorporate all of that starter into the water and really make sure it's mixed in well. I usually describe this as like foamy, I guess you would say. It's bubbly, it's foamy, it has lots of bubbles on the top of it. You just really wanna make sure it's, it's really incorporated, really mixed in there and just looking very active and bubbly. And this is where having a massive bowl comes in very handy. I actually really, really want to find a bigger mixing bowl because truthfully, I'm about to overflow in this bowl, but you're gonna take 1,000 grams, 1,000 grams of your all-purpose unbleached flour. And as you can see here, you can see me like specifically measuring out to make sure I get exactly 1,000 grams. <laughs> This is where you're gonna get extremely messy. So now that you have a thousand grams of flour into that sourdough starter slash water mixture, you're gonna take those hands, get all on in there, get real messy, and you're gonna basically like squish it together. That's how I start it. And you just really wanna combine this into a dough. You're basically, you're just, you're just combining it and incorporating it. You're not kneading it. You're not doing anything like that yet. You're literally just really working it in there and making sure it gets fully combined. I guess you could say my method for this is literally just squeezing it and squishing it together, but truthfully that's what it feels like in my hands. It feels like that's the only way that I can really get it fully combined. And of course, sweet baby Roman and my sweet husband had to stop in and say hello, had to try and take my glasses off, you know, smack me in the face per usual. But I love my family so much, guys. Seriously, I love being a mother. And the fact that the Lord has called me to this life of being a mom and being a homemaker, it's literally a dream come true. So now we're going to prep our salt mixture. So you're gonna take 20 grams of salt. I'm using pink Himalayan salt. It really does not matter what salt you use. I've used sea salt, chunky salt. I've used a lot of salts. They all work the same. And then you're gonna use 20 grams of filtered water. And you're just gonna whisk this together, mix it in really well so the salt starts to disintegrate. And you are going to set this aside with your dough for about 30 minutes. After you have let your dough rest for about 30 minutes, you're gonna go ahead and just wipe down your counter, whatever it is, your surface, make sure you have a clean surface, and then pour some flour on there. Now, I don't have any measurements for exactly how much flour to use here. It's really just kind of something you've come to learn. Um, and you'll even see later on, I add more. But you're just gonna lay out some flour, and then you're gonna take that salt mixture that we made and pour that right on top of the dough. And you're just gonna use your hands and kind of do that squeezing method again, where you're like squeezing it to incorporate the dough and just folding it over. And then this is where you're gonna take the dough out of the bowl and we're going to knead it. Now I'm just gonna fast forward it for time's sake, but I'm gonna knead this dough for about four to six minutes. I usually go only about four minutes, but sometimes it needs longer. But you're gonna go ahead and knead the dough on the floured surface. If you've never kneaded, I don't know if that's the correct term. If you've never kneaded, if you've never kneaded dough before, 
basically in a very non-professional way i would describe this as squishing and folding and repeating <laughs> the same process again so you'll see i literally just have the dough and i will squish it roll it squish it roll it <laughs> and you can see even here i'm adding flour as i go just as it's needed because the more you need it the more sticky it gets and so once it starts getting too sticky and starts sticking to the counters too much i'll keep adding flour Once I have my dough in a nice little dough ball, I'm just gonna go ahead and plop it right back into that same bowl. And we're gonna cover this bowl and set it aside for one hour. I know it seems like a lot, but truly guys, sourdough is a labor of love. <laughs> Okay, so now we are going to do this process called the stretch and fold, which is a very common term in the sourdough community, and that is literally just stretching and folding the dough. As you can see, I'm literally taking one side of the dough, pulling it up and stretching it out, and then folding it over on the other side. And I'm gonna do this to all four sides of the dough ball, if that makes sense, as if it's like a square. And I'm just gonna do that four times around the outside. This is one of my favorite processes in this sourdough making process. I think it's so fun. And also every single time you do it, every time you let the dough rest and you come back and do the stretch and fold, it'll become more pliable and more stretchy and it won't be as firm as it is right here. And yet again, we are going to cover with a linen towel and push it aside and let it sit for another hour. Like I said, a labor of love. Alrighty, and then you can see here that my dough has definitely grown a little bit and you can definitely see that it's so much more pliable than it was an hour ago. So it's a lot easier to stretch, a lot easier to pull, and it's a lot more pliable. And so I'm just going to do the stretch and fold method one more time and take all four of those corners, all four of those sides and stretch them and fold them. Like I said, I'm definitely the farthest thing away from a professional when it comes to bread making and I am just a learner. I am in the beginning stages. I am learning, but I figured I would share this process with you guys because it's very recommended. I get asked a lot of questions every time I make a loaf on how do I do it? What's the recipe I use? And so I figured I would just make one video that I can send to people when they ask me and this is definitely something that you can do if you are a beginner. So we're going to set it aside again and let it rest for one more hour. Okay, so after that hour, you're going to go ahead and start forming your loaves, which is the exciting part. So you're going to take a clean surface again and just make sure to get that well floured. And then as you can see here, the dough has definitely grown a lot. It was literally basically bubbling over the bowl. So I'm going to take the dough out and just plop that onto the flour. Then you're just gonna wanna go ahead and split the dough in half to make two separate loaves. You can just use a knife for this if that's all you have. I'm using a bench scraper here and just separating them into two even loaves. Then I'm just going to kind of fold in the edges and flip it over. I'm not gonna knead it. I'm not gonna really stretch and fold anything like that. I'm just kind of forming it into a round ball and then I'm just gonna plop it upside down and let it sit there. And we're actually going to cover this with a linen towel and we're gonna let them both sit there again for 30 minutes. I know, I know, lots of resting in this sourdough method, but it's so worth it, y'all. Alrighty, now comes the exciting part and we are going to prep our loaves and get them ready for baking. We're gonna get them ready for the oven. I'm gonna show you guys two different loaves here. I didn't actually just make plain sourdough. I made one traditional sourdough loaf and then I made one cinnamon sugar chocolate chip loaf. So I'll show you guys how I do that as well. But basically what you're gonna do is knead it and then you're gonna kind of like flatten it and pull it. So you're gonna like stretch it and pull it on the table so that the bottom of it is really tight and it's really just round to a round dough ball. And then once I have it to the desired shape, the desired tightness, I'm just gonna go ahead and get that ready and I'm gonna get my bread basket. So this is a bread basket that has a linen towel already inside of it and I'm gonna heavily flour it so that when I flip it upside down to bake it, it'll come out easily, it won't stick to it. You'll also see the next loaf that I make, I'm just gonna use a linen towel and a bowl that works just as well. This is just a bread basket for sourdough, for bread specifically that I got on Amazon. 
And now for the sweet loaf. So like I said in the very beginning of this video, these are not my recipes. This is from Shelby McKernan over on Instagram. I love her so much. And this is a method that I learned from her. And this is a recipe with all the cinnamon sugar and chocolate chips that I learned from her and I was very inspired. So basically you're just gonna roll it out flat or stretch it out flat rather. And you're going to take a ton of coconut sugar or maybe brown sugar, whatever the sugar is that you want, but you're gonna uh, roll it out and then put some sugar all over it and then dust cinnamon on top of that and then add a bunch of chocolate chips, honestly, the, the chocolate chips is what makes this loaf. It's really good with the more chocolate that you have. I'm pretty sure in the Instagram video that Shelby made of her making these loaves, she said, always add more chocolate chips. And I, I, I couldn't agree more. All right, and then once you have your desired amount of chocolate chips and sugar and cinnamon, you're gonna fold in the sides of it and put it into this long tube, this long roll, and you're gonna roll it up and do the same exact method that we did with the first roll, the first loaf, and that was to basically do that like pull and stretch method to kind of really get it really tight. Obviously with this loaf, you have to be a little bit more delicate, a little bit more fragile because as you'll see, some of the cinnamon and sugar and chocolate chips start to poke through, but no worries, just be gentle with it and then just kind of use your fingers and stick them back together so that the chocolate chips don't fall out. I'm gonna be using that linen towel and bowl method like I just mentioned and then again, heavily flouring the bowl to make sure it won't stick to it and then putting my loaf in there upside down and just pinching the bottom to make sure none of that cinnamon and sugar seeps out. And now for one more final rest for these poor little loaves that have been resting all day. We are gonna stick them in the fridge this time and we are going to let them rest in the fridge for at least one hour. I have kept these in the fridge for up to like three days and baked them and they've still been perfectly fine. So if you guys don't want to bake both loaves right then and there, then you can save it. But we are going to let them rest in the fridge for at least an hour. Now I'm gonna set my oven to 475 degrees Fahrenheit and then I'm gonna stick my Dutch oven and preheat that in my oven for that one hour that the loaves are resting in the fridge. And it is finally time, finally time to bake our loaves. So for this one, I'm just gonna bake the traditional sourdough loaf. I actually saved the cinnamon sugar one to bake the next day, but you're gonna use parchment paper. You're gonna really, really want parchment paper. And then you're gonna go ahead and score your loaves. Now, actually I learned this isn't just to make it pretty like I thought. It actually apparently will explode in the oven if you don't score it. So there's actually a purpose to scoring it. Honestly, when I first started doing it, I thought that it was just to make it look pretty but apparently if you don't if you don't score it it'll explode in the oven so this is just a simple pattern that I like to do I like to do that little leaf flower design and then one long cut on the side now we're gonna turn our ovens down to 450 degrees take out that Dutch oven and put in our loaf and then cover it and we're gonna bake it covered at 450 for 20 minutes And once you've baked that for 20 minutes covered, you're gonna go ahead and remove the lid and bake it again at 450 for another 15 minutes uncovered. And after 15 minutes uncovered, you're gonna take out your loaf and it'll be all beautiful, all toasted, all mm, just perfection. As soon as the loaf comes out of the oven, I usually like to transfer it to a cooling rack because I just don't want it to bake anymore in that really, really hot Dutch oven. So I'm gonna remove it and put it on a cooling rack and then just stare, just stare at it because it's just beautiful. After letting it cool down for quite a bit, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it open to see how pretty it is, see how beautiful it is. This time it actually wasn't as bubbly, as spongy as normal, but I figured it's great to show you even when it doesn't look perfect, but this loaf was delicious and it fed and served my family well and it turned out beautiful. 
Okay guys, as you can see, the loaves turned out beautifully. And then the next morning, actually after I filmed that clip, I made the cinnamon sugar one. And that one, I'm not even kidding, was probably the best sourdough loaf that I've ever made. It was so, so good. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys got some good tips and learned how to make traditional sourdough loaves. If you guys have not already subscribed, please do so. I would love to have you over here. I make motherhood and lifestyle content and would love to have you guys over here. And I love y'all so much and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.